websites are PrisonPlanet.com, InfoWars.com. Be sure and check them out daily as we chronicle the criminal activities of the New World Order, which is just simply the big private central banks that own the military-industrial complex and the dominant media who are on out-of-control power trips. Governor Ventura has agreed to stay 15 minutes graciously into the next hour. And why? I interviewed him about a year and a half ago, and uh, he got into some questions of 9-11, but he said he wanted to research it more. He's now re- uh, he-, he told me he read 16 books on that subject and others while he's had time uh, down uh, at his summer or winter home in Mexico. And he said he'd be happy to get into 9-11. Just, he brought it up, so he's staying with us a little bit longer to have time to get into that. Uh, Governor Ventura, you've got the floor. Give us uh, your take on 9-11. Well, first of all, Alex, let me state this. You know, being ex-military, when the attack initially took place and I was governor, I went on a very focused tunnel vision mode that our country had been attacked and what the hell do we need to do to repel it. So I, I today kick myself because at that point in time, I had a position of power. And if I would have, you know, not been the way I was, the way all of us were so shocked when it happened that... uh in that position of power, I could have raised a lot more questions at that time about the things that went down that day, and where today, when I raise those questions, naturally it doesn't quite have the impact that it would have had back then. But to me, it's questions that are not being answered and haven't been answered about 9-11. And, you know, first and foremost, I think, is the fact that, okay, in, in New York City and Manhattan, two planes struck two buildings. We'll all be in agreement on that, I think. But how is it that a third building fell five hours later? You know, what they call World Trade Center Building Number 7. And for people that think, well, it was just a smaller building, it was 51 stories high, which, of course, in Manhattan probably isn't that big of a building. But if you were to move that building to Austin, Texas, or to Minneapolis, Minnesota, it would be a huge building. It's the biggest. How could this building just implode into its own footprint five hours later? That's my first question. The 9-11 Commission never even brought it up. They didn't devote even one page to that in their big volume of investigation. Number two, how could those buildings fall at the speed of gravity? You know, if you put a stopwatch on them, both of those World Trade Center buildings were on the ground in 10 seconds. How can that be? If you took a billiard ball and dropped it from the height of the World Trade Center in a vacuum, it would hit the ground in 9.3 seconds. And and if you took that same billiard ball and dropped it 10 stories at a time and merely stopped it and started it, it would take 30 seconds. If you dropped it every floor of the World Trade Center to the ground, simply stopping and starting it on gravity, it would take over 100 seconds to reach the ground. Amazing. And yet they're telling us that, and, and I could go on now after studying it, the planes hit the building, okay, uh, jet fuel is four-fifths kerosene, which is not a hot-burning fuel. And they want us to believe that it melted these steel-structured girders and caused these buildings to pancake collapse to the ground. I was on the site within two weeks after it happened, and I saw none of these pancakes. Wouldn't they all be piled up in a huge mass on the ground? And yet everything was blown into dust. Aerosolized. You know, and and when you look at it from that aspect, it, none of it makes any sense. If you apply common sense again to it, it does not make any sense. Never before in the annals of history has a fire caused a steel structured building to fall to the ground. Governor the Ventura, did. And as the way yeah three of them did. Governor Ventura, stay with a seventy second break. We're coming right back to you. Coming in hot. And as a underwater demolitions expert, I want to get your take on explosives. We'll be right back. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. It is a big idea. A new world order. In the near future, Earth is dominated by a powerful world government. It's known as the Bilderberg Put their objective be world domination? For thousands of years, their dark order grew. Now, as they hail the birth of the new world order, their great dream of exterminating 80% of humanity is at hand. For the first time in history, 
the elite's plan for world government is blown wide open. You will learn the secret that drives the entire New World Order agenda. Bilderberg is making great progress for the world government. Most people have no idea. They're not after money. They have all the money they need. They're after power. That's their aphrodisia. Order Endgame on DVD at PrisonPlanet.com or InfoWars.com. Or watch it online right now at PrisonPlanet.tv. Endgame. Blueprint for global enslavement. You have been warned. Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. We're back live, ladies and gentlemen. Governor Jesse Ventura is our guest for another 15 minutes or so. The new book just came out yesterday, Don't Start the Revolution Without Me. Uh, as part of your SEAL training, you first went through underwater demolitions or frog teams, uh, didn't you, sir? And so having a knowledge of controlled demolition, we've had a lot of engineers, physicists, architects look at it and say that you know, even if jet fuel could have weakened the steel, it would have had a... Uh, collapse where it fell over sideways or certain parts crinkled. It wouldn't have aerosolized and fallen straight down with pyroclastic flows of steel blown in one and two-story uh, pieces sheared off at 45-degree angles with perfect blast points shooting out hundreds of feet and dust shooting out uh, miles. Uh, can you comment on that with your background, Governor, uh, in underwater demolitions as a frogman? Sure. First of all, it's the same training. You know, people, for some reason, want to separate the UDT from the SEAL. And it's all the same. Uh, initially, it's called BUDS, which is Basic Underwater Demolition SEAL Training. And when you graduate from BUDS, you're fully qualified as a demolition expert, whether you go to a UDT team or to a SEAL team. It's basically the needs of the Navy. And uh, actually, they would generally send the better swimmers to the UDT teams because they, they tend to work a little bit more in the water. And every class, your top swimmers will go to the UDT teams, where you guys that can't quite swim as good will go to the SEAL team, but they're completely interchangeable, especially once you've completed what they called SEAL cadre, which was advanced guerrilla warfare. So I spent three years with underwater demolition team 12, and then I spent two years attached to SEAL team one in the reserves. But, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, again, am I a demolition expert on a controlled demolition to drop a building? No, because our standard policy, when we would figure out how to blow something up, we would use the slide rule, and then we always had a standard rule when in doubt overload. So uh, what that means is when you figure out how to blow it up, throw on an extra haversack of C4 just to make sure you get the job done. Because in our type of demolition work in warfare, you're not worried about whether everything blows up. You don't worry about a controlled demolition, which is what they would use to drop a building so that it wouldn't affect any of the other buildings. My point is, is that you've worked with explosives. What does it look like to you? <laughs> Well, upon looking at the film in super slow motion and the way the building fell and comparing that to the way that they do like a controlled demolition of a hotel in Las Vegas, they both fell, fell identical. And it just is beyond me. And I, I again, I kick myself for when it, it initially happened that the light didn't go off. But again, I was so shocked that this thing had even taken place that I, you know, again, I apologize for not being more aware. But I don't think I was alone, as were most of the people in the United States. Well, what about seven? I, I mean, you talk about the free fall speed of the 110 story towers at the speed of gravity, seven falls at the speed of gravity, and it's the classic where, where you see the penthouse fall, the central beam they blow out, then they blow the side beams, it collapses, the CIA, the FBI, defense intelligence, we're all based there, we have videos of police saying, get back, they're going to blow it up, uh, firemen saying, get back, the government said they're going to blow it up, and then they say, oh, we didn't blow it up, have you seen those videos of police saying, get back? 